Okay, so it's been a while since I've done a video, so I'm going to go ahead and do a video. And oddly enough, this video is going to hit on a very important cult that exists today in our modern world. The cult of politics and its roots lie in consumerism. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail about consumerism. You should spend time researching it because you'd be very surprised to find out how it has shaped your modern world. The bare bones basics of consumerism, okay, is creating a culture that desires things that it doesn't need. You remember in The Labyrinth, if you've ever watched the movie The Labyrinth, that's a really good movie with David Bowie, and you remember where Sarah falls into this pit and she forgets her mission, trying to save her little brother, and she's followed around by this little woman that's got a bunch of junk on her back, and the, this little troll woman keeps giving Sarah stuff to distract her. Every time Sarah thinks about the memory that she lost, thinks about why she's there, the little woman tries to shove a trinket in her face. Dollies and shiny things to distract her from who and what she should be rescuing. Okay. Consumerism works a lot like that. It keeps you distracted. It keeps shoving shiny things in your face, things that you don't need. And that harkens back to a time when companies were trying to figure out a way to make more money, so they were coming out with newer things, but nobody was buying these things because they didn't need it, right? So, companies got wise and they developed a science into getting people to want things they don't need. And that's where some of your very first ads come from. Now if you actually go back and you study like advertisements from during, during the last world war and definitely after the last world war, look at, look at the, the marketing schemes like vehicles getting you to buy a car like it's going to make you popular it's going to make you feel more attractive it's going to fulfill some kind of void in your life and they use that same formula to not only try to get you to buy cars but to get you to buy blenders dishwashers um, uh, dresses purses, sunglasses cigarettes None of these things you really needed to buy, but they tried to get you to do it. And then around the 60s, the hippie movement came along and their formula didn't work for them anymore because the hippies were all about, you know, going against the establishment. I don't need that car. I don't need those dresses. I don't want to conform. I don't want to be like everybody else. I don't want to be popular. So companies were like, well, this is the new generation. We got to figure out a way to market to them. So as time goes on, they started studying this new generation of rebels. And what they found is that they could still market the same products to these people. They just had to create different versions of the same product to appeal to their sense of individuality. Remember that word, individuality. So, if you walk into a store today and you look at keychains, you notice they come in different shapes, sizes, and colors. That's all to appeal to your sense of individuality. You're going to find one that really tickles your fancy, and you're going to buy it. Like, you really need that keychain. Don't matter, though. Look at, look at the car industry. 
different styles, different makes, different models, different colors, all geared toward appealing to your sense of individuality. And the marketing behind this, once it became successful, because that was the code they needed to break to appeal to the hippies. You know, that was a leap in cultural evolution. People were not satisfied with having a car like everyone else. They wanted a different car from everyone else. Everybody was not satisfied with dressing like everybody else. They wanted different kinds of clothes, different kinds of shoes, something to appeal just to you. So, around the 70s and around the 80s, you see marketing take marketing take that turn to where it's trying to convince you, the individual, that you should be catered to individually. You should be pampered individually. You go into a, an aisle where you buy bath soap. Look at all the different bath soaps. Smell them all until one tickles your fancy, okay? To appeal to your sense of individuality. I want to smell like me. I want to look like me. I want to dress like me. You know, generation after generation, breeding the sense of individual entitlement through products, through materialism. Then around the 80s, okay, because this science proved to be spot on, Everybody liked to be pampered individually. So the science of consumerism had started to boom in the 80s like crazy. And uh, you start to see consumerism sort of creep into politics and philosophy. You know, the sense of filling filling a, like a deep emotional void in you by having that soft drink that you just love or buying that car you always wanted or having that shirt that expresses you just the way you want to be expressed and they started using that sort of formula and like they, they started taking that consumer formula and they started pumping it into other facets of human society, philosophy, uh, politics were, were two really big ones. But uh, politics would be the most enduring, the most in, enduring um, area involving this, this marriage between consumerist science and politics. Like, yeah. So, politics went from people hearing out a politic, a politician, and listening to their platform, listening to what they say, and sort of getting behind them. Well, they wanted to take it to a new level. They wanted to sort of connect consumerism to that. Okay. And what I mean by that is, if you ever notice, all you have to do is look today. The average election, as it currently stands. Just the last election. <clears throat> Instead of it coming down to one candidate against the other, it's looked more like, are you for this brand or are you for that brand? You know, it, last election, it, it literally came down to does my love for Pepsi is it is it going to be enough for Pepsi to win over Coca-Cola <laughs> it literally felt like that and uh, because people get so emotionally attached to the candidate that they love the most uh, they almost objectify them like they treat them like that 
thing that they can buy at the store that's going to fill some void in their lives. And they get emotionally attached to it because they've been conditioned to get emotionally attached to stuff they don't really need. So when Hillary Clinton lost the last election, you saw the emotional anguish that permeated throughout uh, the Democratic Party, the people that voted for it. They, like, some people literally cried. They thought it was the end of the world because their candidate lost. They weren't used to that sort of thing, were they? No. Consumerism teaches you that um, you have a right to be pampered individually. You have a right to have things just the way you want it. So when they didn't get what they wanted, they were absolutely irate. And the same goes now that the same the, the same mindset goes toward those people who actually voted for Donald Trump, you know, they felt validated as consumers. They didn't realize it came from consumerism, but they had been validated that their sense of personal pampering, which is supposed to be geared toward their wants and their desires, had been validated when he won, when he won, right? And you are living in an interesting time because you are seeing, just in the last four years, you're seeing the birth of the cult of politics. Okay, because that moment in U.S. politics where one group was not validated at all, which consumerism teaches you that you were, if you have your eye on a prize, you're supposed to have it because as an individual consumer you are supposed to be pampered and validated you know through what you want and that started the cult of politics those people who were validated when Trump won you know that only added fuel to their fire you know uh, so what you're seeing is, is a change in culture within the American landscape. You're seeing people almost worshipping political figures. So next time you're on social media, just sit back and look. Watch. Watch. And you'll see. Look closely. And you'll see how people are worshipping political figures. Okay, They no longer see them as representatives of themselves. They are worshipping them. And that is how consumerism has taken a huge, very weird turn. And when we come back, we're going to talk about how consumerism has played a huge role in the decay of spirituality. This ongoing desire in our consumer culture to effectively create legions of people who are constantly clawing at material objects to satisfy their, their primitive wants and needs uh, plays a huge role in their worldview and their perception of things. You know, the cult of politics is a very interesting, newly formed manifestation of that. Or, I mean, it does not matter. It does not matter. If, um, if their political figure does anything wrong, they will automatically find ways of turning a blind eye to it. They'll, they'll make up excuses, right? But if a different political figure who is in opposition to, to their man would to, were to do the same thing, 
well, they would be all over it like flies on stink, wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. This is the rise of, I don't know, I, I, back in the, I guess we could compare it to the worship of, of pharaohs, almost. Like the Egyptians were very interesting people. You know, they didn't just see their pharaohs as the, like, top tier of society. You know, they, they didn't see their pharaoh as the top tier of society. They saw him as a living god. So, I mean, you get a unique, you get a unique view into that sort of mindset. It's really happening right in front of your eyes. It is. Like currently with this with this new election, look, people are almost worshiping Joe Biden. And think about all his flaws. Think about what makes him maybe not an optimal candidate. Things that he actually shares with Trump that makes Trump not an ideal presidential candidate either. But it doesn't matter because they've decided to get behind that man almost like they're worshiping him. Like the old Egyptians used to worship their pharaohs. They were infallible no matter what, right? And in a way you can kind of thank consumerism for that. Consumerism brought us to this point. Mm. So we'll be back with more on this discussion.